மைக்ரோஃபோன் ஆன் ஆகலாம் மைக்ரோஃபோன் ஆன் ஓகே ஜஸ்ட் பிஃபோர் வி ஹவ் ஃபினிஷ் எஸ் டூ எஸ் ஒன் பிஃபோர் கோயிங் டு த நெக்ஸ்ட் ஆஸ்பெக்ட் ஜஸ்ட் ஒன் ஸ்மால் கொஸ்டின் வில் டாக்கி கடியா காஸ் லவுட் எஸ் ஒன் ஆர் சாஃப்ட் எஸ் ஒன் லவுட் எஸ் ஒன் நேம் ஒன் கண்டிஷன் விச் காசஸ் டாக்கி கடியா பட் சாஃப்ட் எஸ் ஒன் திஸ் இஸ் கிவன் இன் பெர்லா ஃபேஸ்ட் ஃபிளாஸ் இட் இஸ் கிவன் இன் ஜூல்ஸ் கான்ஸ்டன்ட் சாஃப்ட் எஸ் ஒன் டிஸ்பைட் டாக்கி கடியா திஸ் இஸ் அவர் சீஃப்ஸ் ஃபேவரட் கொஸ்டின் அக்யூட் சிவியர் யார் அக்யூட் யார் அக்யூட் ஏஆர் கண்டிஷன்ஸ் காசிங் அக்யூட் ஏஆர் அயோட்டிக் டிசெக்ஷன் இன்ஃபெக்ட் எண்ட கார்டேட்டிஸ் ஸோ பேஷன் வில் பி சிக் அண்ட் இன் டாக்கி கார்டியா பட் இஃப் எஸ் ஒன் இஸ் சாஃப்ட் ஆல்வேஸ் திங்க் அபவுட் அக்யூட் ஏர் ஸோ அட்லீஸ்ட் டு டயக்னோஸ் ஒன் எமர்ஜென்சி யூ ஷுட் பி தர ஆஃப் த ஃபேக்ட் தட் டாக்கி கார்டி வில் காஸ் லவ் டேஸ் ஒன் ஒன் கொஸ்டின் நெக்ஸ்ட் கொஸ்டின் ஏம் சம் கண்டிஷன்ஸ் விச் காஸ் லாங் பிஆர் ஆர் பிராடி கார்டியா பட் லவ் டேஸ் ஒன் தேர் ஆர் டூ ஒன் இஸ் எம்எஸ் because what's the reason for loudest one in ms the yeah. mitral valve yeah. has to travel a longer distance prior to its closure because of the persistent opening of the mitral valve mm-hmm. so it doesn't have a correlation with the pr it is just the opening of the mitral valve the next one is epstein's anomaly if you remember the pathogenesis of epstein's anomaly we have something called as sail valve that is normally what happens we have three valves in the tricuspid valve right one of the valve is atritic so the septal valve become large the other valve becomes atritic so one valve being very large it will produce a loud s1 that loud s1 due to epstein's anomaly is called a sail sound or sail s1 ravi shared one uh, echo video right so that is the sail movement one valve is large one valve is small but the actual area of the ventricle becomes very very small that is called as atrialization of the left ventricle right ventricle actually what happens is it should be like this right remember two valves should be like this but one valve becomes distally positioned this valve becomes very large to go to this valve so the atrial cavity appears to enlarge ventricular cavity appears to become small so two conditions causing loud s1 despite long pr will be ms and epstein's anomaly just for a theoretical purpose okay having finished s1 and s2 the phase between s1 and s2 is called systole the phase between s2 and s1 is next s1 is called as diastole why i am asking this is we have to know about systolic sounds and diastolic sounds okay systolic sounds are classified into three mm. early systolic sounds mid systolic sounds and late systolic sounds just remember two early systolic sounds and late systolic sounds so there are five causes of six causes of early systolic sounds one is bicuspid aortic valve bicuspid aortic valve is also called as congenital as right it's one cause of congenital as next is valvular ps so as ps dilated pulmonary artery dilated aortic root i already told dilated pulmonary artery dilated aortic root will produce loud a to loud p2 they can also produce early dilated aortic dilated pulmonary artery dilated aortic root another important thing is aortic valve prosthesis so if you have to auscultate for uh, aortic valve prosthesis we will hear an early systolic sound So early systolic sound means how you time? Just after? Yes. Yes one. Just after the carotid pulse. So this early systolic sound is also, previously was, it was called as ejection click. But Perlov says it is just an ejection sound. But whatever it is, ejection click, the causes are congenital AS or bicuspid aortic valve, valvular PS or congenital PS, dilated pulmonary artery, dilated aortic root and aortic valve prosthesis. if you hear ejection click then it is valvular mm. this bicuspid aortic valve remember another finding mm. it can produce loud a2 it can produce ejection systolic sound right it can produce ejection systolic murmur so three findings can occur with bicuspid aortic valve it can produce loud a2 because unless it is calcified because bicuspid aortic valve in future it will become calcified calcified then a2 will be soft. a2 will be soft but without calcification it may produce a loud a2 mm. it may produce an ejection systolic sound or ejection click it may produce an ejection systolic murmur one important uh, i'll discuss this later but i'm mentioning it now whenever you hear ejection systolic murmur first thing you have to rule out is hyperdynamic state the most common cause of ejection systolic murmur is hyperdynamic state so randomly you are auscultating an op patient you are hearing a murmur somewhere it's just an ejection systolic murmur mm. of grade uh, less than grade 4 that is we are hearing without a thrill 
mostly it should be in favor of a hyperdynamic state but now the quest esm if you hear in palmeria that's what i'm coming now if you are hearing a grade 3 ejection systolic murmur in the palmeria area what does it mean if you are hearing an ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area what does it mean both are different palmeria area is hyperdynamic state obviously why because of all the valves palmeria area is the least diameter valve you know the normal area of the mitral valve is 4 to 6 cm cm square tricuspid area is the largest valve its area is even before that even uh, beyond that 8 cm square the area of the aortic valve is 3 to 4 cm square normally pulmonary valve is the shortest smallest diameter valve mm. so uh, normal flow through a stenoid i mean Narrow small sized valve. valve will produce a so, yeah. but the important thing is one important cause of innocent murmur or the ejection systolic murmur in grade 3 murmur, ca- cadre will be young adults harrison says one of the six causes of hyperdynamic circulation is young adults mm. you expected to hear it in pulmonary area but rather than in the pulmonary area if you are hearing a ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area it indicates a bicuspid aortic valve mm. this differentiation is very very important this point is given in bronwald and perlaus cleaning perlaus congenital heart disease this may sound very simple but if you remember that 25% of the cases of calcific aortic stenosis is due to bicuspid aortic valve mm-hmm. the incidence of bicuspid aortic valve is 1% in the general population 1.5% in the general population identification is very very easy a grade 3 ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area we may easily dislodge it as a innocent murmur mm-hmm. but please don't discharge it because how to differentiate it pulmonary area better heard it's an innocent murmur aortic area it is better heard it is bicuspid aortic valve so that's why i am repeating this point after today's class Actually, never forget to this. esm will be heard everywhere but it is better heard better heard in the pulmonary, pulmonary area. area then this, yes. if it is better heard in uh, aortic area, area it is okay. okay okay so that's why i mentioned this point here so causes of early systolic i mean early systolic sound i told you now causes of mid to late systolic click only one cause mitral valve prolapse and tricuspid valve tricuspid valve prolapse mid or late systolic sound previous textbooks say early systolic click is called as ejection click because how it is produced it is produced by the valve or due to the root right so early systolic sound is called as ejection click mm. whereas late systolic sound is due to prolapse of the mitral valve into the left atrium mm. during late systolic late systolic correct during late, late phase of ejection the mitral valve prolapses into the left atrium mm. that is called as late systolic sound we call it as a non ejection click because it has no relation to the ejection at all it occurs in the late ejection phase so previously it was called as non ejection click some terminologies may change so bav or congenital as is an early sound valvular ps is an early sound mvp and tvp are late systolic sound uh, perlaus says some other sounds also can cause early systolic sound that is small perimembranous vst with septal aneurysm just know the name okay so just a few points bicuspid aortic valve uh, what's the mechanism of that uh, click Normally, in ejection what happens yeah. mitral valve closes mm. prior to the opening of the mitral uh, aortic, aortic and valve. pulmonary valve the cusp will become tensed mm. right so the abrupt cephala doming of the aortic and pulmonary valve is the one which causes systolic click it is not the opening the abrupt cephala doming of the aortic valve or pulmonary valve during rapid ejection phase of systole is the one which causes ejection click of bicuspid aortic valve or valvular ps now the next question where it is better than in the first part of discussion i told you any sound which is produced within the ventricle will produce sound in the apex mm. right so this click is better heard in the apex murmur is heard in the aortic area bicuspid aortic valve click is better heard in the apex okay even though the cause is bicuspid aortic valve click you should look for in the apex that is the one i am trying to convey doming of valve then the sound or prior sound. to the opening actually you just uh, see my hand mm. the valve is like this prior to opening it comes like this so the jet hits goes back into the left ventricular cavity prior to opening it is not the flow across the valve which is causing this sound it is just the doming so the sound gets vibrated back into the left ventricular cavity so only we are hearing the sound in the apex so bicuspid aortic valve it is due to cephala doming of the 
abrupt cephalic doming of the aortic valve it is a ventricular event so it is best heard in the apex okay one important thing is i told you about split test one right uh, split test one may be confused with ejection click because both are heard in the apex right yeah so one important differential diagnosis of split test one is i uh, bicuspid aortic valve ejection click how to differentiate is in split test one first component is m1 m1 is louder mm. whereas in ejection click ejection click will be loud so if you are hearing two sounds two first start sounds in the apex if the first start sound is loud it is split test one if the second sound is loud it is ejection click simple it's a very important practical application because ba is very 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 common 1.5% in the general population similar mechanism how is a valvular ps can produce a ejection click due to domi uh, cephala doming of the pulmonary valve leaflets it is best heard in the pulmonary area right it is not heard in the rv chamber it is heard in the pulmonary area mechanism the same i told you if the second sound is loud ejection click yes if the first sound second sound i am not telling s2 mm. second component of the first start sound is loud means it is ejection click if the first component of the first start sound is loud na it is loud i mean split test split test one it is very rare to hear if you are auscultating day in and day out you may hear this finding i heard the uh, split test one only once in my life one professor demonstrated it to me when i was a ug okay okay so valvular ps produces pulmonary valvular ejection click i told you this is the only right sided ejection zone which is reduced during inspiration so what mechanism they are telling is during inspiration blood flow to the right ventricle increases when right ventricle is increases it prevents the doming force will not be transmitted that effectively in a dilated left uh, right ventricle okay so increase in right ventricular volume pushes the valve cusp cephalad prior to the onset of ventricular systole the same thing the door opening mechanism if the valve is like this the ventricle is contracting more the doming occurs and it opens like the valve is like this contraction occurs it doms and opens so the sound will be more if during inspiration what happens the right ventricular volume itself increases it becomes more cephalad already even before contraction now if this partially open door if it opens again the sound will be less so okay right so in right and uh, i'll read out the line mm. increase in right ventricular volume pushes the valve cusp cephalad prior to the onset of ventricular systole so even though the systole occurs it cannot push the cusp even further so the sound of pulmonary ejection click will be small valve soft yes okay this finishes systolic sounds so what are the systolic sounds early systolic sounds are bav pulmonary uh, valvular ps uh, dilated aortic root dilated pulmonary artery and uh, last one is an aortic valve prosthesis okay now we will come to the diastolic sounds first just note down the sounds the early diastolic sounds are opening snap pericardial knock pericardial knock in books it is given as early diastolic sound of constrictive pericarditis knock pericardial knock next we have something called as ventricular knock of mr these are very sounds i haven't heard so far next is the prosthetic mitral valve sound remember prosthetic aortic valve sound is a systolic systolic sound prosthetic mitral valve sound is a early diastolic sound both are due to opening of the valve please remember that if someone asks you in the examination aortic valve sound occurs during early systole due to opening of the valve prosthetic mitral valve sound occurs in early diastole due to opening of the mitral valve simple then tumor plop plop okay so leave of the pericardial knock and leave of the ventricular knock of mr three important causes are opening snap prosthetic mitral valve sound tumor plop three important causes of early diastolic sound what comes after opening snap s3 what is s3 sound produced due to rapid, rapid filling of the ventricle, ventricle. right so that is s3 what is s4 atrial contraction yes it occurs in late late diastole right so s3 is a mid diastolic sound s4 is a late diastolic sound how will you time s3 correlates JVP. with wide descent of s3 how will you time s4 
Suppose JVP is not seen, how will you explain? Before it. Simple, again, the same timing only. S1 is there. S4 occurs closely before S3. Uh, closely before S1. S3 occurs sometime after S2. So, in older textbooks, physiology textbooks, they mention S3 is called as proto diastolic sound. Mm. S4 is called as pre systolic sound. Whenever someone means pre-systole, think of atrial contraction. We have something called as pre-systolic accentuation and all, no? So, whenever someone means pre-systole, it is due to atrial contraction. So, proto-diastolic sound is S3, pre-systolic sound is S4, at least time width. Or the simplest technique I told you, whenever you are hearing a third sound, mm. call it clinically. For example, in a patient with left heart failure, if you are hearing a third sound, mostly it will be due to S3. S3 yeah. Because left ventricle cannot dilate or contract properly. So, when the flow occurs through that, we will be hearing S3. If you are hearing a third sound, in the background of a systemic hypertension or a HOCM, in our uh, non-compliant left ventricle, the right left atrium has to contract more to push the blood. So, it has to be S4. S4. If you are hearing a third sound, in the background of a suspected mitral stenosis, it has to be opening snap. If you are hearing a third sound in the background of a pulmonary hypertension, it has to be loud P2. These are the four important causes, S3, S4, opening snap and P2. The first distinction is very very easy because S3 and S4 are low pitch sounds. Better heard with the bell of the stethoscope. So, S3 and S4 can be separated to one extent and OS and P2 can be separated in another extent. I told you how to differentiate between OS and P2 mm. by, by the inching method. S3 and S4, of course by timing it is very difficult because by theory we say pre-systolic is S4, proto-diastolic is S3. Correlation with Y descent is S3, correlation with uh, A wave is S4. But you know, for a practical purpose, think clinically. If you are seeing a systemic hypertension or an AS or a HOCM case, the third sound has to be S4. S4. If you are seeing a mitral regurgitation patient, if you are seeing a MI patient, the third sound has to be S3. S3. Simple. Okay. So simple as that. Okay, this is about the diastolic sound. We will discuss just about the important sounds. Something about opening snap. So, just I told you how, how uh, S1 is produced due to the valve tensing. The valve fibers getting tensed due to closure of the mitral and tricuspid valve. Opening snap is due to produ produced due to the opening tensing opening. of the fibers of anterior mitral leaflet due to opening. It is specifically the anterior mitral leaflet because it is the largest leaflet. It is enough to say it is opening of mitral valve, but if someone asks what valve specifically, you have to mention about anterior mitral leaflet. It is an early diastolic sound. I told you it is high pitched sound. It is heard everywhere, better heard in the between mitral and tricuspid area. Perlov says it is in the tricuspid area, but remember it is best heard between mitral and tricuspid area. Better heard in standing. I haven't mentioned it in my notes, but anyway. What's the closest to DDF opening snap? Split test 2. Split test 2. Mm -hmm. Or loud P2. So, how to differentiate between uh, opening snap and split test 2? One is inching method. Hmm. Then other areas, if it Inching is, method, that is if you are coming from, from the pulmonary area, area to, to the, the apex. If, if the sound is, reduces, uh, it is pulmonary uh, area. If the sound does not muffle, it increases means it is opening snap. Because it is better heard in this area, right? Mm. Opening snap is better heard in the apex. So, first method is inching method. Second method is, what is the commonest condition causing pulmonary hypertension? MS. Right? Mitral stenosis will cause opening snap. The same mitral stenosis will cause pulmonary hypertension. So, both will coexist. So, in inspiration, you will hear three sounds. In expression, you will hear two sounds. Mitral stenosis causes opening snap. Mm. The commonest cause of pulmonary hypertension is mitral stenosis. So, both will coexist. Mm. So, in, a, in the same patient, it is logical for you to hear both opening snap as well as uh, P2. Mm. Right? So, you can hear four sounds occasionally. Okay. Sorry. At least remember inching method. Okay. Or another technique is in expression you will be hearing two sounds if it is an opening step. In inspiration you will hear three sounds. Right? Okay. One important question. I told you in a calcified valve you will not hear so, uh, opening okay. snap and S2. Mm. Because both are due to the normal valve only. Calcified valve will not produce opening snap. A calcified valve with an opening snap heard. Is it possible? Yes, if it is due to a tricuspid stenosis. 
because we often tell about mitral stenosis there's another entity called as tricuspid stenosis also so we we may just ask it and then say opening snap is present but if you are doing an echo the mitral valve may be calcified so in that condition always think of tricuspid stenosis normally opening snap will be produced by mitral valve opening snap is produced due to opening of anterior mitral leaflet or Not anterior mitral. tricuspid leaflet uh, anterior ah. if it is due to mitral stenosis we, uh, it is due to, uh, so on mitral like that but the most common being a mitral stenosis so always we tell if opening snap is opening snap is heard with the calcified mitral valve it is tricuspid stenosis mm. another important clinical aspect is in tricuspid stenosis there is no no blood to the left ventricle left atrium at all so mm. pulmonary edema cannot occur in ms so ms patient should present with pulmonary edema if they are not presenting with pulmonary edema think of associated ts mm. if a calcified ms patient is presenting with opening snap think of ts just for this clinical point you have to know okay now the gap between a2 and os is called as a2 os interval mm. this Ah, this is important because it is one of the indication for severity of ms only two important factors are there which determines the severity of ms one is the duration of the murmur next is o2 a2 os interval if the a2 os interval is short means early opening it is severe ms, MS? severe ms short a2 os interval it indicates severe ms mm. longish long na mild but just note this down think it later because this question was asked by hari gran sir severe ms we expect a short to a to os interval mm. there are two conditions where there is severe ms but long a to os interval one is systemic hypertension next is older individuals if you think you will get the mechanism so i am skipping it now systemic ms and older individuals hmm. ms is again associated with uh, atrial fibrillation so what happens to the a2 os interval in af longer cycles will have a short a2 os interval shorter cycles will have a longer a2 os interval just note down and if you think longer cycles will have short a2 os interval shorter cycles will have longer a2 os interval it is inversely proportional okay so opening sound it is due to op- tensing of the anterior mitral valve leaflets it's an early diastolic sound high pitched sounds how to dif- closest to dd is p2 how to differentiate by inching method second is the inspiration expression method then uh, msts i told you the correlation okay then calcified valve in the presence of uh, mm. ms i told you a to y interval is one important thing which indicates the severity yeah, of yeah, ms yeah. except two conditions shtn and older individuals af and os interval i told you Okay, just a quick question. What are other causes of early diastolic sounds apart uh, from A2S? Pericardial knock. Yes. Ventricular knock. Knock of MR. Tumor plop. Prosthetic mitral valve. Of this, which are the low, I mean, low frequency sounds? Tumor plop is a low pitched sound. Mm. So, an early diastolic low pitched sounds will be a tumor plop. An early diastolic high pitched sounds will be a opening snap. Opening sound of uh, valve... mitral valve will be very easy because it's a obvious click metallic sound okay we have finished the early diastolic sound now come to the s3 and s4 again not nothing much what is s3 it is a sound which is produced due to the vibration of the left ventricle due to early diastolic filling correlates with the wide descent of uh, jvp it is a proto diastolic sound okay now this s3 is of two types lvs3 lvs4 LV? LVS3 and LVS4. Simple. S3 is of two types. S3 is of two types. LVS3, RVS3. Oh, uh, sorry, I told wrong. LVS3 and RVS3. Mm-hmm. Okay, where will you hear RS3? It's a ventricular event, right? Yes. Obviously. So, LVS3 is heard in the apex. RVS3 is produced in the right ventricle. Right tricuspid. ventricle means it's nothing but the tricuspid area. So, LV is, LVS3 is heard in the mitral area. RVS3 is heard in the tricuspid area. What I mean to say is both are very, very localized sounds. you cannot hear uh, s3 you cannot tell s3 by auscultating the pulmonary area you have to auscultate only in the mitral area that to in the left lateral position left lateral position so that the heart comes closer to the chest wall you have to auscultate in the with the bell of the stethoscope if you press it uh, tightly you will the sound will disappear so hearing s3 needs a some skill low pitch yes so s3 is a low pitched sound 
here in the apex with the left lateral decubitus position it's a low pitched sound variably here for rvs3 left lower sternal border in the supine position anything which increases flow to the ventricle will cause augmentation of s3 right so ask the patient to do an exercise provided they are not in failure s3 will ag aggravate any thing anything which increases flow mm. to the ventricle will increase s3 because it's nothing but filling sound right so by a passive leg raising or exercise you can accentuate the sound so how will you better hear s3 lateral position bell of the stethoscope with follow after a passive leg raising or an exercise so i think the causes i didn't mention you can very well read them uh, non comp i mean anything which causes increased flow into the left ventricle mr uh, left ventricular failure right ventricular failure etc what is s4 s4 is due to sound which is produced due to accentuate uh, rapid diastole second rapid diastolic filling due to atrial contraction the same thing rvs4 lvs4 lvs4 is heard in the apex rvs4 is heard in the llsb it is aggravated by exercise tricuspid area right now the thing is s4 is due to atrial contraction atrial contraction is absent in af so af we we want here s4 mm. this is again a clinical point if you are hearing a third sound never confuse it with s4 in ms atrial fibrillation will be there if you are hearing a third sound you can confuse between os and p2 especially if there is they are high pitch sounds suppose if there is ms plus mr now the question comes mm. if there is ms plus mr you have to fix which is the dominant lesion if opening snap is the third sound ms, MS will be dominant it's a high pitch sound if s3 is if s3 is present it means mr is the dominant lesion it's a low pitched sound that's all okay so s4 disappears in af s3 and s4 both are absent in lv inflow stenosis so ms ts will not have s3 and s4 that's no flow at all into the left ventricle right ms la s3 s4 kekad ms kekad yana flow illa flow flow irundha da sound kekadu so s3 and s4 the lv inflow stenosis sound will be absent okay this finishes the added sounds now the last part of today's discussion murmur <laughs>